Well, hey, everybody, it's Outland. How's it going? And I have another very special guest with me today on the show. I have Josh, Subaru Josh Ebersol. Mm -hmm. Hey, Subaru yep. Josh. How you doing, man? Not too bad. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad you're here. Me too. It's going to be fun. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. No problem. I got nothing to do. So <laughs> I know. Nowhere to go, right? Yeah, can't can't go anywhere. Can't really do anything but work and come home. Yeah, man. So how are you holding up through all this? Um, about as good as I think anybody can. I mean, I feel like I'm doing as much as I can to um, prevent from getting sick. Um, unfortunately, I still have to work, and I'm or, and I work in a dealership, so I'm still like around a lot of people. And just today, we decided to um, stop allowing customers from coming in. Um, and so I'm thankful for that because it kind of eases my stress a little bit because yesterday I had a guy come in just coughing and hacking everywhere. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I feel like I'm, it's kind of weird. Like normally I have anxiety about like this kind of stuff and about like finances, but for some reason I feel kind of calm about it. Um, so I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm just really hoping none of my friends or family get sick. And so what about you? Yeah, man. Same, same. Uh, just, you know, glad that everybody in my family's healthy. Um, just trying to minimize any kind of exposure to anybody right now, which right. is so weird. You know, it's like <clears throat> I had to go to the store and get prescriptions the other day. And it was weird because like people look at you like you have the plague, like everyone just like backs away and they cover them. It was just, it's, it's so weird. Like this, this whole experience is, is the strangest thing. And, um, you know, but I don't want to bring this home because I have a, I have a 70 year old in the house. I have an 87 year old in the house. Um, mm -hmm. I do not want to get them sick. So, um, you know, trying to be as selfless as possible, but there's certain things you still have to do, you know, uh, right. groceries and, and stuff like that. And, um, fortunately, uh, it's, you know, we're coming up on April here in Ohio. So, um, the weather's getting better. It's like 60, 62 out here right now. So, Mm -hmm. I just rode the bike with the boys and we, and then we took the dogs for a walk. And nice. Uh, so it, at least there's that. If it was the middle of December or January, I can't even imagine how horrible it would be. Yeah. The cabin fever would be even worse. Yeah. And, and I went on, I just got back about an hour ago from a bike ride with uh, Tim and his father-in-law, Tim Watson. And uh, there were so many people out. I don't think I've ever seen more people at the park and like, Normally when we ride, we have this kind of route we do and um, we maybe pass one or two people on this little, like it's like a running path or like a bike path. I think, I bet there was close to 50 people out in the park, if not more today. And it was only like 55 here in Finley. So it wasn't like super nice, but people had nothing else better to do. And so I, I told Tim this coronavirus is a hoax from the American Health Association to get people to go outside and get in shape. <laughs> Not really, but, uh, but it's crazy. Like just, yeah. I mean, I'm so glad that the weather's finally breaking. I mean, I get cabin fever, you know, as it is, I can't imagine being quarantined in my house, you know, go, I, I've pretty much been going to work and then coming home. I don't go anywhere else just because like you said, you don't want to bring it home. And, and thankfully it's just Jordan and I in the house. So the only people that have been in our house in the last week and a half has been me and Jordan. So trying to minimize people coming over and and if someone does come over you know to drop something off or to pick something up I tell them to stay outside i'll bring it to you or you can drop you know drop it off on the porch we don't want you in our house yeah yeah that's that's a good point though because i work from home so i i don't even get to leave the house now it's like crap I, <laughs> but I, uh, I wish i could work from home but that's kind of impossible in my job I, <laughs> you know i i work with I won't say too much detail, but, you know, certain people where I work aren't the most, you know, I, I, they don't know basic hygiene. So getting people to wash their hands more than like once a week is about impossible sometimes. So like I'll see people coming out of the bathroom without washing their hands and they'll touch everything. And it's like, it got me freaked out. I'm like, dude, come on. Like we're in the middle of a crisis. Like everyone's saying, wash your hands, wash your hands. And so if I would, you know, if I worked from home, then I wouldn't have to worry about it. But unfortunately in the business I'm in, it's impossible to work from home. Yeah. But what do you think about, <clears throat> so, you know, they've been saying, you know, 
it's okay to go outside. We encourage you to go outside, go for a hike, this and that. But at the same time, you know, they just closed the Smokies. Uh, yeah. I think yesterday. So it's like, you know, go outside, but don't go outside. You know, it's because mm-hmm. there's so many people. And, you know, it's like walking around my neighborhood and every, I think every person in my neighborhood was out. And I'm like, well, everybody's outside now. So, you know, is it going to get to a point now where we just, we can't even go to a park? They're all going to be closed. Mm-hmm. You know, I know you and I are supposed to go on a hike here in, a, in like a week. What is it? A week? And a, yeah. A week? About a week and a half. Yeah. I don't think that, yeah. Actually, we're about a week and a half away. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, man. I don't even know what the state of the uh, parks are in West Virginia, if they're open and closed or what. It seems like, West Virginia is kind of seems like one of the last states to kind of react. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, on one hand, like I do agree, like you should get outside you know, because the last thing you need is a bunch of people getting super depressed in their house. And, um, but at the same time, like, like at the park, I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. People are getting out, but people are like still like inches away from each other. And, you know, I don't know. It's, I guess it's different if it's your family. Uh, but there was like a, a group of like kids, playing at the playground and it's like you can't be the playground right now and and so i i get it though like i get why they're closing the national parks i mean i saw pictures from shenandoah i saw pictures from yellowstone and grand teton national park and people are just crowding there like worse than they do throughout the rest of the year and so would you want to be you know neck and neck with people on the you know the, the boardwalk on the grand prismatic spring i wouldn't you got all those people coughing and hacking so i get it it sucks because you know I was looking forward to our backpacking trip. I was, I've been I've been ready to go for well a month now, and and uh, it's not going to happen. At least not when we were planning on it. But yeah. I kind of hold on to the hope that it, you know maybe this will be over in May or you know maybe end of April and we can we can go out and so I mean yeah it's it's crazy it sucks you know this year I'm finally like okay I'm gonna go on a backpacking trip every month. Jordan's like you know my wife gave me permission to go and then the coronavirus hits and it's like ah dang it but you know it, it you just gotta take it day by day and that's what i'm doing right now is just taking things day by day and uh hopefully if everybody does their part then we'll be able to get back out in the woods here soon yeah yeah and i would i wouldn't even be inclined to think that where we were planning on going you know it's kind of like a wilderness area probably wouldn't be that many people where we were going to go but you have to you still have to stop and get gas you got to stop and get food yeah. Unless, unless you pack all your food. So you do have to interact with people. So there's that risk. Um, right. Yeah. So it, you know, hopefully maybe may we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We got, I mean, we got all year long to, to go and, yeah. and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I, I got like a bucket list. Well, I've had a bucket list for like four years of places I want to go and I'm hoping, you know, to, to check some of those off this year. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. We can do a virtual backpacking trip. We can all just FaceTime and, you know, camp out in our living rooms. <laughs> we may be doing that, man. It may be June and we're still cooped up. Oh, man. Who knows? That'd be awful. Can you imagine? Yeah. That would be, a, that would suck. Oh, man. So tell me, man, how did you get into the outdoors and hiking and camping and all this stuff that, that you do? Uh, well, I've always been kind of drawn to the outdoors. Uh, you know, I can remember on every vacation we went on as a family, me and my dad would always go off and go hiking. Uh, you know, we went to Colorado in 2007 as a family. And I remember walking around Rocky Mountain National Park, um, went to West Virginia several times, like the Somersville area. And there's a really cool hike. I actually have a video of it from 2010 when me and my dad went and, uh, and so, yeah, me and my dad have always been big into hiking, um, just nature, riding our bikes, you know, just being outside. And, um, but I really didn't get into camping until, uh, until like 2015, 2000, yeah, 2014, 2015, when my buddy invited me out to Wyoming. And, uh, and so that's when I kind of really started uh, d- getting into backpacking and hiking. And because uh, I actually just saw a memory on my Facebook from yesterday where I bought my first sleeping bag, like f- legit sleeping bag. And because uh, I was buying all my gear for my trip out to Wyoming. And I was buying, I think I bought my, oh, I forget what I bought first. Maybe it was either my sleeping pad or my sleeping bag. I don't remember which one I got first. But I remember I was so excited. I got this Marmot Aspen 40 sleeping bag. And it was like three and a half pounds. compacted down to like, you know, as big as my 15 degree bag compacts down to now. Um, and, 
So that's kind of like how I got into backpacking was my buddy invited me to, to Wyoming, but I've always been into, into nature and hiking. And I mean, from the time I was a little kid, me and my dad would always go hiking at the local parks. And so it's always been a part of my blood. I just never really got into backpacking until a couple of years ago. That's awesome. Yeah. Backpacking is, you know, it's a different animal from just plain hiking and, and just plain camping. Mm-hmm. It's, it's its own, it's its own thing. <laughs> Yeah, right. You have to get there's so many different things you have to get used to and not only, you know, carrying everything you need on your back, but getting used to complete darkness, complete quiet, you know, knowing, okay, I'm in black bear country or my first backpacking trip was in the Wind River Range in Wyoming, which is like the heart of the grizzly country. <laughs> and so the whole time I'm thinking like I'm in this little tent and the grizzlies are everywhere i thought they were everywhere they probably really weren't but uh so it was, it was nerve-wracking and getting used to sleeping in you know being i'm a city boy i through and through i'm a city boy uh and so uh, getting used to sleeping outside was probably the hardest part for me um and i still have issues every once in a while that's why i don't solo backpack i can give you a thousand reasons why i won't solo backpack but number one is i do not a big fan of being alone in the wilderness especially at night <laughs> well, you kind of got thrown in the deep end there, man. That's okay. Let's start out in the middle of grizzly country for your first backpacking trip. Yeah. And it was, that sounds like that, a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was fun. But not only that, not only like being in like wildlife, you know, around wildlife, but the elevation, you know, we were at camping at that 9,500 feet of elevation. Um, and the highest that we were at was right around like 10,000, I think it's 10,300 feet was, was the pass we went over. Um, and so, which, you know, looking back, that was kind of low compared to the, some of the other elevations I've been at, like, uh, the, uh, pass in Utah we did was a little over, I think it was a little, a little over 11,000 feet. And so getting used to the elevation, getting used to a heavy pack and just getting into a routine, getting used to your gear, you know, setting up your tent. Um, setting up your sleep system, filtering water, which, you know, that, that was a process I had to learn and so cooking and stuff. And so it, that's the thing, like with camping, you can kind of like bring all your essentials in the car and you can, you can leave it, you can cook over fire, bring cast iron skillet, but with backpacking, it's a completely different animal. Yep. So how much have you changed out your, uh, your kit since, since that first trip? Completely. <laughs> I think the only thing I still have, that I, well, yeah, the only thing I still have that I, that I might have taken on my first trip was my first like um, chamois cloth or like a microfiber towel. I think I still have the same one I, I had when I first got into backpacking. Uh, I used the Sawyer Mini I bought until it, it froze a couple, uh, I think it was last year, it froze. I think I actually think it was at the uh, first YouTube meetup. <laughs> I forgot to uh, sleep with it and it froze. Um, but uh, I mean, my everything's changed. My, my pad, my, my whole entire sleep system, you know, I went from the climate pad and I had a, uh, a it was a, oh, I can't remember the brand of the tent. Um, it was like five and a half pounds. Um, you know, now I use a, pretty much exclusively, exclusively use a hammock now when I can. Um, my pad changed, my pack changed, everything changed. And so it's just a process of learning what works, what doesn't. And then of course, I'm a gear nerd, so I like to buy stuff I don't really even need. You, you know, I think you do the same thing too. You just like to buy gear. Oh yeah. And it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. That's that's the. And I always pick the expensive hobbies. You know, backpacking, my bike, drumming, all that stuff. And so backpacking, uh, that's taking a lot of my money. <laughs> what hammock are you using now? I forget. Uh, the dream, ham- the dream hammock, Darian. Oh, okay. Uh, I've had that for, I bought that one in 2016, I think, and still using it. It's still holding up. There's a couple little, just small little tears in it. Um, but I don't plan on getting another one until this one breaks. And, I, and when it does, I'll get another dream hammock. Yeah. I love my dream hammock. Man, I can't say enough about them. They're so you awesome. Have a, you have a sparrow, right? I have a raven. Raven. Okay. I couldn't remember which one you had. Yeah. Love it. And Randy and Deanna are just awesome. I, I know you know that. You and I have been to their shop and hung yeah. out with them. And uh, yeah, I actually asked uh, Randy if I if he would do a mod for me, how much it would he would charge for it. And he's like, just send it back. I'd pay the shipping and I'll do it for you. And I was like, wow, just great mm-hmm. people, man. Just yeah, can't say enough they're, they're the type of people like they they treat you like family. And when me and Jordan, you know, after the 
for it was those are the second subscriber meetup we went over to their uh their facility their you know their production facility aka their house um we i was only planning on staying there for like 20 30 minutes i wanted to check everything out talk to him a little bit we ended up staying i think for close to three hours we sat in their living room and we snacked and we talked about uh well, me and Jordan, we were talking about, you know, this is before we were married. We talked about our, our wedding. We talked about, uh, you know, future backpacking plans. And they talked about their family. And, you know, before we knew it, like three hours had passed. And just the, the most kind down to earth people and would do anything for their loyal customers. And heck, you can even see on Facebook when someone's like, what hammock should I get? Should I get a dream hammock should i get a uh, a dutch where should i get whatever and randy is always like if you have any questions just you know message me or email me i'll be more than happy to help and so they're they're so accommodating and just great people yeah if, if anybody asks me i i immediately say dream hammock always yep. um i won't get into the to the, to the stuff about dutch but uh i have my own opinions about dutch mm -hmm. and, uh, he makes good quality stuff I, I have some of his gear but, I, have uh, a, I use the Dutch stingers with my tarp and I've, I've had those for about as long as I've had my dream hammock. And I mean, they've, they've held up great. I've had no issues with them. Yeah. Yeah. I use, I use some of his hardware. I think what was it the wasp and the, I don't know, whatever the hook, Dutch hook, I think yeah. on my ridge line. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So you were talking about uh, your bike. So you're also into biking. Mm -hmm. um, have do you do bike packing or, or just riding i haven't yet uh i'm last year i really, really wanted to go on a trip but it just didn't it didn't work out um bike packing gear is and, and well biking gear in general is like way more expensive than backpacking gear and so thankfully what i have will actually work with bike packing because i've got the lightweight stuff and that's what you kind of need for bike packing but like the bags and stuff are so expensive, especially for good stuff. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, like, yeah, like, like my Arcall, my z packs Arcall was like 350 bucks. I think after I got in the hip pockets and stuff, but like comparing that to like biking bags, good ones, you're looking at spending that on just one, like on, on like a whole main kit. And, uh, you know, I can't justify spending that kind of money again. You know, that, that was, I, I think I got my Arcall before I got married. So that's probably a good, thing um but uh but yeah it's bike packing is so expensive but this year me and tim have been talking about doing the um oh it's the tow path uh, in cuyahoga valley national park oh uh, it's the canal way it's there's the it's the erie tow path canal or something like that um it's like i think it's, it goes from akron to cleveland or something like that um and we've been talking about doing that because you can ride one way and then take the train back and so i think we're going to do that um i want to do like a, a a legit bike packing trip like full on gravel like super hard uh but we'll see if if that happens or not that's definitely in the works but for now i enjoy just hopping on my bike and uh, i have a route i have a couple different routes i do in my uh in, in our town uh but for the most part i'm a very laid back leisurely biker kind of like how i am with hiking uh, i don't like to crush out miles i'm not the type of person to ride 30 miles going 20 miles an hour the entire time i I like to take it all in and so i just love hopping on my bike and it's therapeutic for me and especially right now when the frogs are coming out the wildlife's really coming back to life and uh i just like to take it easy take it all in and and i, I enjoy biking almost as much as i enjoy uh hiking and backpacking so you have a gravel bike so i'm not real familiar with with, with gravel biking and what what that entails is that mm -hmm. just off road like it's not mountain biking but it's off-roading basically is that what gravel riding is kind of it's like a mix between road and mountain bike it, it doesn't have a suspension like a mountain bike um so every you feel the bumps but because it takes bigger tires you can go on like gravel and dirt and grass and stuff like that it's definitely not meant to do like jumps and all kinds of crazy stuff like that uh but you can go on yeah gravel roads a little i've taken it off on some pretty crazy like dirt paths and i've had no issues and it does good on the road too and so i just put me and a karate josh just put on 40 millimeter tires on my bike uh, about two weeks ago and uh, specialized says that my bike will only fit up to a 37 
uh, millimeter, but we're like, hey, you know what, let's just try it. So we did, and it looks so much better with the 40 millimeter. And the, the wider you go, the more uh, traction you're going to get on gravel. And so, uh, so yeah, gr gravel bikes, I feel like are a good medium because uh, you can go on the road uh, and they're smooth on the road and they're fast on the road. But then if you want to go off road, you have that choice too, where if you have a mountain bike, you can only do mountain bike stuff. But if you have a road bike, you can only go on the road. So if you try to run a 28 millimeter tire on gravel, you're going to crash your bike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just bought uh, a used Cannondale mountain bike because um, that's what I was used to was mountain biking. And mm -hmm. uh, just I got a good deal on it. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably just going to take it off you know, kind of off road, like dirt. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of, so I, I probably should have got a, a gravel bike, but <laughs> I got a great deal on this bike used. So I, I, I sprung on, I'm actually going to do a video on, I think about. Yeah. It, gravel bikes are, uh, but it's crazy when, when you think about the price difference between bikes and backpacking gear, like you spend a thousand dollars to $1,400 and you're still getting an entry level gravel bike. Yeah. And, uh, I got a really good deal on my bike, so I, I can't complain. Um, but it's crazy to me that a $1,400 bike is an entry level gravel bike, which for $1,400, you get a pretty awesome backpacking setup. You can uh -huh. get, you know, a, you know, a really nice custom pack. You can get the super nice pads or whatever you want to use for, you know, hammock or, or tent. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely wait to get a gravel bike until you know for certain that you love biking, but, uh, we definitely need to hit the trail sometime and go, go biking. Once this whole coronavirus is over, I'll come down to Dayton and we'll go ride together sometime. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And like you said, the, the bike packing gear is so expensive. Tim sent me some stuff and some sites and I was like, holy cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like take a second mortgage on for the stuff. Yeah. Same. It's crazy. <laughs> I messaged uh, Hilltop Packs and I was like, hey, could you make me some bags for, uh, for bike packing? I just want some like snack bags uh, for all my handlebars. So cause what, I, what I told them is I want to be able to put like uh, a uh, um, LaCroix can while I'm doing like casual rides and or just put like snacks for a gravel ride. Because like some of the more expensive like snack bags are like 40, 50 bucks a piece. And then the cheaper ones, I'm like, you know, m my philosophy with buying anything is buy once, cry once and spend the good money the first time uh, and get something good. But I just can't bring myself to, to pay some of the, uh, the uh, top brands for, for bikepacking stuff. It's just so expensive. So I'm hoping maybe if uh, the uh, owner of Hilltop Packs watches this, maybe he'll help me out and we can make some, uh, some bags for my bike. Heck yeah. Okay, Ben, you heard that, man. Uh, when you're done making masks, we need some bike packing stuff with yeah, our faces that, on it. <laughs> I saw that he's been, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Have my face on the snack bag. That wouldn't be <laughs> conceited at all. Uh, but I saw that him and his, uh, his family has been sewing masks to donate. Like, that's so cool to me. Like what, what big backpacking vendor have you seen that's doing that? You know, that's why I love cottage vendors, you know, because they, they're kind of family oriented. They're ran by a family, so they know how it goes. And so it's cool seeing, um, you know, people like him stepping up to, to do stuff like that. I think they said they made 200 masks today or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's crazy. That's awesome. And, you know, and unfortunately, you know, our, our favorite cottage vendors, man, they're going to really feel the, the bite of this whole thing when it's just over. I don't know yeah. how many are actually going to survive this, this thing. I hope all of them. Mm-hmm. But the dream hammocks and the hilltop packs, you know, the, man, they're gonna they're gonna really feel it because people are not gonna be buying backpacking gear when they're worried about their job or they lost their job. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'm fortunate to have a job right now um, with all this, but you know, the last thing I'm really thinking about, I'm still buying stuff, but I shouldn't be. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, you know, I'm still like going online, and then I get mad. I'm like, oh, why is it gonna take so long to get that? Oh, well, yeah, because there's like a virus around the world right <laughs> yeah all my, but, all my money all my money goes to well i'm either driving it or i'm drinking it and that's like <laughs> coffee i've been i've been loading up on coffee because if we do you know do a quarantine and i can't get any coffee i bought two pounds of coffee beans and so i'm hoping that that lasts <laughs> me but yeah that's what i've been spending my money on is food forget the toilet paper man get the coffee we, 
we got plenty of that. We get big Costco packs. We got we got plenty of that. It's just Jordan and I, so we can we can make it last. But but yeah, I know like I'm not thinking about buying anything just because you know thankfully me and Jordan are both still working and she's actually been making more money in tips uh, than she normally would because people are being really generous. You know that's another thing with this whole thing is you know people say that you know going to get a little political here. Hope it's okay. Uh, people say that America is divided, which in a sense it is, but times like this are when you really see people come together. And so, uh, you know, people have been supporting local businesses like crazy here in Finley. And I work right across the street from a brewery and they're doing like takeout and they fill up growlers and stuff. And people have just been going in there left and right. Uh, someone left a $500 tip uh, to split with everybody. And so it, it's really cool seeing everybody come together. And so I, I hope that uh, people, you know, those that can spend the money are supporting local businesses and pumping money back in their local economy and and hopefully once this is all said and done you know there is some like gear i've been eyeing to get and so i'm hoping uh after all this is said and done i can buy some more gear and support those companies that that uh you know are making a difference like hilltop packs yeah well what's cool too is to see the innovation like i have a brewery that just opened up down the street from they opened about a year ago and uh, i love their beer it's fantastic. Um, and they've been doing this really innovative thing where they have these, they're called crowlers, you know, they're like to disposable cans mm-hmm. and they fill them up to go, but they, like they didn't have this before this whole Corona thing, but mm-hmm. they put this whole online storefront up where you can pr- order ahead and say, I want X crowlers with X beer and then just come to their shop and you pick it up at their store and go. And it's like, they didn't have that like two weeks ago. So yeah. they just do the power of technology, man. And some, some very fast, you know, innovation. They got that storefront up mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, they're still making money. I guarantee you they're making good money. Oh yeah. People don't, people, there's a couple of things people won't go without and that's beer and coffee. And that's probably about two big things, beer and coffee and tobacco and, products, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I was uh, sitting at work yesterday and this little old lady in this old geo Metro parks in front of the brewery. And I was joking with my boss, like, uh, you know, it'd be hilarious if she got a growler full of beer. And I kid you not like 10 minutes later, they brought out a growler of beer and she drove off with it. I'm like, that's hilarious. And so it's cool seeing that local business businesses are still thriving. And, you know, I guess certain businesses are, I know my favorite coffee shop here in Finley is struggling there. They're, they're, uh, they're really hurting. And so I'm hoping they can pull through and, and uh, cause yeah, that's, yeah. That's how I'm worried about the, uh, you know, the city coffee house you've been to it by my house oh, yeah. down here, like, that just opened and they were, you know, up until like, I think this week they were staying open, like, to mm-hmm. go and then they're like we have to close we, yeah. we have to close and i was like no that's gonna hurt them so bad because <laughs> they yeah, don't have they, a drive through they don't have any i mean they're just closed they're, they're yeah. making any income at all yeah and they, they have really good coffee too i was so impressed with when me and jordan went and uh they they have such good coffee you know I, i'm a coffee snob and and for me like i could care less about beer and alcohol and stuff but for me coffee is like my life and so i hope that these you know not just coffee shops and stuff like that but all the uh small businesses can really bounce back from what's going on and and uh yeah it's, it's crazy you know we could we keep bouncing back to the coronavirus but it's on everybody's mind and and i don't know i've never lived through anything like this before you know the last time there's anything this big was in what 1918 during the uh Spanish flu. You know, I, I keep telling everybody I've lived through Y2K. I've lived through 9-11, Ebola, swine flu. Uh, so we'll make it through this, but it's, it's, it's a scary time. But, you know, having, you know, well, I'm going to group chat with you and a bunch of other awesome backpackers. Uh, so having friends to help you get through that and kind of encourage each other has really been, really been cool. That's, that's another thing with backpacking is I've made so many good friends through, well, YouTube and backpacking. And so, it's cool having everybody to support each other right now. Yeah, it is good. It's, it's great talking to you guys on that chat, you know, having that uh, voice of reason and then seeing all your memes come through, make me laugh. You know, mm-hmm. and I've, I've had some pretty low points through this, especially this past week. Like, I'm like, man, this is just, this is awful. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, but, you know, you guys keep me laughing and, <laughs> and, you know, like I said, it should be, 
I'm grateful. I'm thankful that no one I, I know has this. Mm-hmm. Really, no one I know has this right now. And thank God. Um, I hope it stays that way. Um, you know, but it's a scary time. It is a scary time yeah. because, like you said, that the only thing I can really compare this to is 9 11. It's the only thing that is even comparable in my mind. And that was only yeah. really it was on you, a U.S. problem. I mean, really, yeah. it was a, it was kind of a global problem, but not really. And this mm-hmm. is a global problem. This is affects every country, every yeah. person. Uh, so it's it's a global scale thing. And uh, yeah, I've never yeah. lived through anything where everything was closed and you don't go to work and you don't leave your house. I mean, it's just it's surreal. I told my wife, I was like, I, I know I'm just going to wake up. This is a dream. I'm going to have mm-hmm. like the craziest story to tell you when I wake up that I dreamed that everything was shut down because there was this virus. And then I'm like, no, 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 it's really happening. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it really does feel like a movie, like especially on days like today where uh, it's so nice out and you see everybody out and then you remember, Oh yeah, there's a pandemic going on. And I got to, you know, our hours changed to work. So I worked eight to four and I got off work early. I'm like, all right, I can get used to this. I'm like, wait, it'd be cool. It'd be cooler under different circumstances, but, but it still is scary. You know, thankfully we don't, we only have one confirmed case here um, in Hancock County. Uh, but you know, it, you, I know it's going to get worse before it gets better, but I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can, you know, listen to what the governor's saying and, and get through this. It, it is scary, but you know, and I worry about my friends and family, but I do have faith that we'll get through it. You know, we've, We've gone, you know, in my 27 years of life, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff happen. And, uh, and you know, like, like the governor said, we're, you know, it, it is kind of like our, our generation is Pearl Harbor. You know, we're under attack. We're, we're in a war. Um, and, uh, but we, the only thing is we can't see our enemy. And so, yeah, I'm doing stuff like this and getting outside. It definitely helps, you know, ease your mind. And uh, I can't imagine like being alone and going through all this and not having any friends or family or, you know, and yeah, it's crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. So back to hiking. Uh, yeah. What are your, some of your favorite hiking locations? Uh, oh man. I, I love everywhere I've been. Like I could, I think I, I did a, I might've done a podcast when I was doing it on, on this subject about my favorite trips. Like, I have favorite places to go, but there, I have favorite moments from every trip. Um, I would say my, my favorite places to go is definitely Red River Gorge um, because everything is so accessible and uh, it's so gorgeous down there. I, I love Red River Gorge. Um, that I, I love Red River Gorge. Uh, probably, um, I, I really like to picture rocks in Michigan uh, because it's easy and the views are amazing and you get, you know, you get the wilderness, but you get the beach. Uh, you get swamp, you know, sand, you know, sand dunes. It's crazy. It's just, I love it up there. And I was just telling Jordan the other day, I was like, we need to get back up to Michigan. It's so gorgeous. And um, I, I've only backpacked uh, in Dolly Sods once. But that's another one of my favorite places. Like, it's easy hiking for the most part. Uh, it's gorgeous. And, but you know, it's hard to it's hard to decide because everywhere I've been has been awesome. Uh, but as far as like on this side of the country, uh, Red River Gorge. Uh, the Picture Rocks and Dolly Sods are my three, probably my three favorites. And the nice. Smokies. The Smokies are pretty awesome too. The Smokies are awesome. So what's like your bucket list location? Do you have any place you really want to go to you haven't been yet? Oh man, I, I've been really wanting to go backpacking in like the Black Hills in South Dakota. I think that'd be cool. Um, I There's, funny enough, I, I really want to go, my, one, one place on my bucket list, is the Manistee River Trail in Michigan. I've had that on my, that was the first trip I ever like found on the internet and then planned to go to. And every year something comes up, like it's either going to be bad weather or something comes up and I can't go, like I get sick or something. And so like, this, one, this year I'm like, okay, this is my year, I'm going to go. And so that's one of my bucket list um, hikes. Uh, and then also probably my all time uh, like I guess bucket list place I want to go is I want, I want to do the JMT. I think that'd be awesome. The John Muir trail. It's like my bucket list. If I could ever get a month off of work, I would probably go hike the JMT. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've been to, uh, you've been to Hocking Hills, mm-hmm. right? 
So yep. is, that's where you proposed to your wife, right? Is that there? Yep. Uh, Con Conkles Hollow in Hocking Hills. I, I love Hocking Hills. I wish you could backpack there because if you could like just go camp wherever you want down there, that would be awesome because there's been some uh, uh, some places I've gone off trail. You're not really supposed to do that, but I, I did. That were awesome. Like they'd be so cool to, to backpack down there. And, and yeah, I love Hocking Hills. I, I could go there. Besides the crowds, I could go there every weekend it's it's you know you feel like you're not even in ohio yeah i really don't know why um there isn't some some kind of backpacking options there you, you'd think they would have some kind of loop mm -hmm. around that area that, it, something that could connect all the you know you could connect old man's cave and the conco's hollow and ash cave there kind of is there's the the granny gatewood trail i think but oh, it's only yeah. like eight six or eight miles because i've done that multiple times yeah the buckeye trail goes through there but you just can't you can't camp in the state park and and I, that, oh, that'd be so awesome like it is just so cool there there's so many cool waterfalls and, and rock features and and that's one reason why i i proposed to jordan there because uh, she had never been there before and i think yeah that, that was her first time ever going to conkles hollow and it was just too perfect and and i love that that gorge at conkles hollow where you just keep going further and further in and then you, to get to the end it's that waterfall and i knew that was the perfect spot to to ask her because there's nobody else around and and uh it's cool yeah it's you cool just kind of trapped her back there it's <laughs> yeah kind of yeah, she, she didn't she couldn't she couldn't say no so there's nowhere else to go <laughs> but yeah that, it, it was i knew it was the perfect moment because she was like focused on the waterfall and uh she was looking at this waterfall for like two minutes. I'm like, she doesn't even know what I'm doing. So I set up my camera, hit record, grabbed the ring out of the, the ring box out of my bag. And I remember like I had this whole like thing I was going to say, I was going to be like, Oh, I love, love you so much. You know, we've had so many good memories together. And when the time came, cause I said, Hey Jordan, she turned around and I just went blank. And I, I, I immediately like, my legs buckled and I got down on one knee. I'm like, all I can say is I love you. Will you marry me? So like my whole like speech I was going to say just went out the window in that moment and uh, nobody else was around and we, we were by ourselves. And then like five minutes after we, uh, you know, I proposed and she said, yes. Then people started filtering in, which it's rare to have Conkles hollow or anywhere in Hocking Hills by yourself for more than 30 seconds. Yeah, for real. So did you have to get her permission to post that video? Uh, no, she, she didn't care. She, she knew I do. I did YouTube and stuff. And so she didn't, she didn't care. We were, we were both excited to announce it. And, and it was hard because I think I, that was when I was still releasing weekly videos. And so I released like a teaser of like, of us hiking. Uh, and then I got down on one knee and I blacked it out and I'm like, see what happens next, like next week or something like that. And so, but I remember, I remember thinking like, uh, before I asked her to marry me, how, you know, I can't wait to announce this to people that were getting married. And uh, so after we got done hiking and, you know, Jordan's walking around like, like this all day, like, look at this ring, look at this ring. <laughs> and uh, it was cool. We went to uh, the barbecue place down there and like, we just got engaged. We're so excited and posted it to Facebook and posted it to YouTube. And, and it, it was cool. I, I loved it. That's awesome. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. that's a great that's a great story and you have it recorded on youtube it's forever <laughs> yeah yeah you know that that's you know we have it on video and we have our marriage on video too thanks to tim and because we weren't planning on doing it but he recorded it he said he asked if we could do it if he could do it i'm like sure so that was cool we got because yeah, your YouTube. marriage was at mohican right yep because that was actually restless uh, outdoors he was the one that uh, jokingly said we should get married there because we were planning on our wedding at the, uh, it was the first, no, it was, it was the second meetup. It was the second YouTube meetup. And he's, you know, we were planning our wedding and he's like, Hey, you guys should get married here. And I was like, Oh yeah. All right. And then we were driving home. Uh, it was actually after we got done at Randy Indiana's because we were talking to them about our plans to get married. And we're like, we're getting married in May. We have no venue. We have no plans. And so uh, we're driving home and Jordan's like, what if we did get married in Mohican? I was like, are you for real? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So in three weeks we planned a wedding and my, my original plan was to get married at campsite three. Cause it was just, it's so cool there. And then, uh, cause it was just going to be me, Jordan and like our very close friends. We weren't even going to invite our family. Well then people expressed their, uh, their opinions about how they weren't invited. And so we ended up inviting 
some family, some close family. We still got this small and at the, we ended up doing it at the, at the overlook so everybody could go and hike in and, or, you know, it wasn't, so, so they wouldn't have to hike in, but it ended up being perfect because the colors were at peak and the weather was perfect. And yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. And anybody who's thinking about eloping, I guess it was eloping in a sense because we ended up pretty much scrapping our entire wedding plans. Um, anybody who's thinking about doing it that way, do it. Don't even, don't even second guess yourself. Like who cares what people think if that's what you want to do. Cause me and Jordan have no regrets whatsoever doing it. There's people who are upset, but you know, we saved so much money and it was us, you know, we got pizza and coffee afterwards too. Like you can't beat that pizza and coffee <laughs> and getting married to Mohican. I kind of wish I, I would have done that. I've never got my wife to, to agree to that, but uh, cause she wanted the whole shebang, but that would have been awesome. In my opinion, yeah. it would have been like, just go, Let's just go to the park and, and get married. Yeah, we. Uh, I was shocked when she said she wanted to do it because I, when we were first got engaged, I said I want to get married in the Smokies. I want to go to a mountaintop in the Smokies and get married. And she's like, Well, I want my family there and blah blah blah. And I was like, Okay, well, we'll we'll do a traditional wedding. And we had kind of picked a venue to get married, but every, the wedding industry is so expensive, like it's crazy. And so uh, when she said let's get married in Mohican, I was all over that. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way because it, the memories we have from it, our memories we're going to you know, cherish, for, cherish for the rest of our lives. That's awesome. Well, you are a lucky guy, man. You have, you have an awesome life. I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm, I, got, I got lucky when, uh, when Jordan said she'd marry me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So you, did, so you, uh, you got a pretty cool uh, a wedding gift from uh, Jason Helmendahl. You got a food dehydrator, dehydrator right? I did. Yeah. So That's you've been funny. doing dehydrating with that a lot? Uh, I haven't recently, but uh, I did. I actually have a ton of dehydrated meals in my freezer waiting to be used. I, I have the uh, Shill Brothers uh, trail burrito stuff. Um, I also made, uh, I also dehydrated uh, Skyline chili and a bunch of other stuff. And so it's just still sitting in there waiting to be used. And so every time I open my freezer, it reminds me I haven't gone on a backpacking trip in forever. Yeah. And, uh, and so yeah, I love it. it. It's, it's a good investment. And, and, uh, it, I love making, it just love experimenting with it. I think that's something I think I'm going to drop the money on. Cause I think I would use it quite a bit just year round, but especially oh, yeah. for backpacking though, I'd love to, you know, dehydrate apples and mm-hmm. whatever else. It's bananas. So easy too. Yeah, dehydrated apples are where it's at, especially if you use like honey crisp apples and put a little bit of like cinnamon on them when they're done. It is like the best thing ever. And I remember when we did that trip to Red River Gorge, everyone like raved over the apples. Oh yeah. I remember yeah, that. Those were so good. I I'm, I love apples in, in general, but on the backpacking trip, it was just so nice just to be eating those, excuse me, eating those apples the whole, I just have my hip pouch on my Z packs are called open just walking on the trail just munching on the apples <laughs> i guess you can really dehydrate pretty much anything right and there's nothing you can't yeah. really dehydrate uh dairy oh. i heard doesn't really dehydrate that well so like okay. cheese and milk so uh that's why i haven't done like alfredo or anything like that but i know um uh, tony uh, is it tony P- pippin it's like our world outdoors mm-hmm. they dehydrate a bunch of stuff um, and Spagiver, he's big on dehydrating. He he does soup and all kinds of stuff. Huh. And because uh, we did a, a dehydrated meal exchange earlier or uh, last year, and uh, Tony sent me one, and uh, Spagiver sent me one, and uh, for a couple other people are really big into it. And uh, yeah, you can literally do anything. Like if you have leftover spaghetti, you could just dehydrate it if you wanted to. Huh. I've done that too. That's cool. We'll have to. Talk to Spaghetti about that. I'm talking to him on Saturday. So, oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. So, let's talk about the coffee, man, because you're like the coffee aficionado, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, mm-hmm. what, uh, what's your, well, what's your favorite? You like your, um, iced coffee or what's it? Uh, pour, or what's it? Yeah, what's cold your favorite brew? coffee? Cold brew. Uh, co- cold brew is my favorite. It's actually what I'm drinking now. Yeah. Uh, don't ask me what the blend is because I don't remember. Uh, it's a, it's, I think it was like a, oh, I don't even remember where, what like region it's from. I got it from a local roaster, um, but I love cold brew. It's my favorite, especially this time of year when it's starting to warm up. Um, I like every morning I make a hot pour over. Uh, so those are my two favorites, cold brew and a, and a pour over. Um, yeah, I, I drink 
coffee religiously. I don't drink as much as some people think I would since I'm a coffee snob. Um, I usually drink one cup in the morning before work. And then sometimes I'll drink coffee at night. It just depends on how early I have to be up the next day and, and how like, like I'm on my second glass of cold brew tonight, but I don't have to be up early tomorrow since our hours changed at work. Well, yeah. And I found myself since I started working from home full time, drinking a lot more coffee uh, mm-hmm. than I, than I, than I used to. Uh, so I immediately get up and I, and I do either a French press or I do a pour over um, of some kind. Mm-hmm. And then, then I usually end up having a coffee in the afternoon about, cause I always tend to hit the wall mm-hmm. about three o'clock. I get just really tired and hard to focus. And so I need that caffeine shot. So I end up drinking another coffee in the afternoon. Uh, really helps. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It, my problem, if I work from home, I would just constantly snack and drink coffee. Like that's why I don't come home for lunch because I'll just eat everything. So if I like actually pack a lunch and I don't take coffee with me and our, luckily our coffee at work is terrible. So I don't want to drink it. Um, but I work like two blocks away from my favorite coffee shop. So I'll be eating lunch. I'm like, you know, what sounds good. Cold brew. So I'll walk over and get some. And so I, I, I typically, like I said, I, I, I drink one cup in the morning. That's like my morning routine. I, I eat my breakfast, I make my coffee. Um, and then every once in a while I'll drink a cup after work. Um, but if I, yeah, if I was home, I, I'd go through that pound and a half of coffee I bought in like three days. Well, yeah. Well, usually I'm the only one in the house who's drinking coffee, but my wife's grandmother's staying with us and, uh, she drinks a lot of coffee. So I end up making a pot for her every morning and I just find myself going through a bag of beans like that like man usually this will last me like three months <laughs> mm-hmm. but i'm, I'm, I'm terrible i would buy like i'd buy folders or something for if someone else is drinking coffee because i feel like a lot of people drink it just because for the caffeine and so i because i'm a coffee snob i would rather have one really good cup of coffee versus a whole pot of like okay coffee it's kind of like when uh michael scott bought the wrong pizza He's like, is it Alfredo pizza or pizza from Alfredo? And uh, he's like, would you rather have a lot of just okay pizza or a little bit of really good pizza and a, a little bit of good pizza? And so that's, that's how I am. I'd rather, much rather have a good cup of coffee. And so whenever someone comes over and I know they're not like a coffee snob, I'll kind of use my cheaper coffee for them. <laughs> and I'll save my good coffee for myself because I hate when people waste coffee. No, I agree. Because... I drink my coffee black. I don't put anything in it. So it's got to be good coffee to begin with. It's, it's like got to taste beer. good. Yeah, exactly. Just like this beer I'm drinking here. It's got to be good. But you know, what then are you her, drinking? I am drinking, uh, this is uh, Miller Lite. No, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a craft. It's a hazy something, hazy. Is it, is it IPA? Yeah, hazy IPA, yeah. yeah you're, you're a big IPA fan. You know, and it's funny because I never used to be. There was a, I used to, hate ipas hate them and then one day my whole palate changed and i loved them i, I don't mm-hmm. know what happened but uh kind of like that with uh, other things too mm-hmm. i've always loved coffee but i but now i i admire better coffees i understand where you're coming from like i know i can tell when it's crappy coffee versus yeah. good coffee and now i don't want to buy crappy coffee to take out like on the trail when i like, mm-hmm. cause if you want that really good cup of coffee, when you wake up and tra- when you're yeah. backpacking, I want good coffee. So mm-hmm. now I'm like, okay, I'm going to gr- grind my beans. Or, it, it, I've watched some of Spagiver's videos on this. Like he takes like an AeroPress out there and he's like grinding. And I'm like, yeah, that seems excessive, but I really, I would do totally that. do that. He's, he might be a bigger coffee snob than me at least maybe for backpacking coffee. Cause he's got like a legit setup. And uh, that's one thing I don't have is like a hand grinder and an arrow press because that'd be way better. Well, way better than instant coffee. And the French press I have is huge. And so that's one reason why like I would rather drink no coffee than drink instant coffee. So normally on backpacking trips, I don't, I don't take coffee. Sometimes I'll take like Starbucks via and I'll mix it with a hot chocolate packet, but dehydrated coffee. That's like, that is not even coffee. It's like, eating dirt or drinking dirt yeah i usually bring the starbucks pa- uh, via packets because they're easy but you're right they man they're just not that good it doesn't <laughs> even taste like coffee it tastes like gravy mixed with coffee like and some of the stuff like um 
I know oh, – what's his name? The juggler backpacker guy. I uh, can't remember his name. He likes the Medaglia Dora. Oh, Shigur Sh- 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 Yeah, yeah. He likes – I tried that, and I'm like, this isn't any better than the Starbucks Via. Oh, you know, no. That stuff is not good. Uh- <laughs> no. I, I know Darwin, he uses one that he raves about, and I want to try it. Uh, I can't remember the name, but uh, I mean, I'm not opposed to an instant coffee. In fact, uh, a local coffee shop here, not in Finley, but cl- close to us, they have what's called Swift Cup uh, coffee. It's instant, but apparently it's supposed to be just as good as like a pour over. And so I want to get some of that because maybe I'd actually have a good cup of coffee in the mornings for backpacking. <laughs> Well, I have one of those uh, G- GSI pour over filter deals, um, mm-hmm. but I've, I've complained a lot about it because it was a pain in the butt to take out in the trail. Uh, mm-hmm. So I use it at home though. I, so I do pour overs at home every, almost every day with my, that thing. Which one do you have? Is it the, it's, it's the green, it's the, it's orange and black. It's the plastic with the little plastic legs and they clip on. Oh, the it's like the ultralight one. Is it the one uh-huh. with the reusable filter? It well, it's just a mesh. Yeah, it's like a mesh yeah. filter bag, but uh, it's it you it's impossible to clean. And then somebody was like, yeah. "Well, you need to take another filter to put in it, silly." And I was like, "Well, now it's, I'm not going to have any coffee taste with all those filters, so I yeah. don't want to do that." Yeah, I know. I was talking to uh, Chris from that hiking guy, uh, and he has the ultra light one too, and he hates it. And so I use the uh, Java Drip. And so I use that actually at home for my pour over because it works so well and uh, that, it weighs them a little bit more and it is a little bulkier, bulkier, but it makes a really good cup of coffee. And so I, the one thing about um, the, the ultralight with the, with the mesh one, uh, you can't really um, fill it up and let the, let the coffee steep in the water. So you get this like super bitter and acidic cup of coffee because you're not letting the beans brew it's there you know the, the grounds brew and so that's that's i couldn't i couldn't use that I, i'm so picky about my coffee brewing that i would just throw it in, throw it in the trash and not even using it <laughs> and i actually learned that from you the, the proper uh pour over technique uh that mm-hmm. i watched i learned that by watching your videos like man this really does work you gotta you know you gotta let them bloom yeah gotta let that's, it sit it's a big thing man i had no idea i had no idea yeah I didn't either. I've, I've been slowly perfecting my coffee brewing over the last couple of years. And like before, you know, I've had that GSI Java drip for like three or four years. And uh, before I would just, you know, pour all the water in, call it good. And then now I've watched so many videos on YouTube. I'm, I'm like, okay, I can now, now I know what works and it makes a good cup for my taste. And so it takes, you know, it's like, it's like backpacking. You kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. And then you kind of perfect what you like and uh and that's that's all that matters yeah it is very much like backpack that's a good analogy i like that well i had one more question for you i just wanted to uh ask you really quick i know a lot of people who haven't seen your channel maybe don't necessarily know about uh the weight transformation that you went through man and that Mm -hmm. can you just tell a few folks about uh, about that experience yeah so um for you guys that don't watch my or haven't seen my older YouTube videos, I've been making YouTube videos since like 2009. Um, I used to be really heavy uh, about uh, seven years ago. Um, I was overweight and you can tell in my videos too. I just looked, I looked terrible. And uh, I used to be big into paintball. And uh, one day after playing paintball, I was like, man, I am really out of shape. I'm I remember just looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, wow, I look terrible. I need to make a change. And so I started a low carb diet in 2013 and uh, nine months later, I lost 60 pounds and uh, it was hard. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life because it takes a lot of dedication. Um, And so I lost 60 pounds and uh, it changed my life forever. I'm a firm believer that uh, if I, if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have the things I have today. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And, you know, especially with backpacking, I don't think I would have gotten into backpacking or at least as much as I am into today. I probably wouldn't be married to Jordan. And uh, I don't know, it it, it changed my life. And uh, if you put your mind to it, uh, you know, you can, you can do it. And uh, I've kind of made it my goal to help anybody I can uh, achieve their goal, even if it's only 20 pounds, but uh, you know, losing 20 pounds or whatever, but yeah. Um, 
I still can't believe, you know, it's been almost seven years since I lost all the weight. Well, it's been a little over six actually, because uh, I started in April of 2013 and my goal was by, I started it, I started at 212 and I was like, by New Year's Eve, I want to be uh, 156 because I thought that, that was like my weight. I was in high school. And so I made little goals and uh, I was like, okay, by Memorial Day, I want to be under 200. By July 4th, I want to be under 190. Um, by Labor Day, I want to be under 180 and all this stuff. So I made, I made little goals. And, uh, and so I... Uh, did that and then i remember christmas eve or sorry new year's eve weighing myself and i weighed 156 and i was like holy crap i can't believe i did this and then people started i'd say like 20 about 20 to 30 pounds in that's when people started noticing they're like wow you've lost weight how much weight have you lost and then the girls started noticing and i'm like okay this is cool like i've never had attention like this before and uh and i mean it's had lasting lasting effects on my positive effects on my life and uh, I'm, I'm pretty healthy now. And uh, yeah, best thing, best thing I ever did in my entire life was, uh, was losing weight. That's awesome, man. That's, that's really admirable. I mean, cause so many people try and, and fail and, you know, I, you know, let myself get pretty uh, way heavier than I would like to be. Um, and it's hard when you want to do stuff, you know, physical activity, like backpacking or biking. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you you realize that you get out there. Like I remember my first backpacking trip. Um, I hadn't backpacked in a while, and then I went out in 2011. And it wasn't even a hard trip. It was Charles Dean Wilderness in Indiana. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine how hard that was. Not right. Hard but I was so out, enough out of shape that it kicked my butt. And I was like, "This is ridiculous. How am I ever going to be able to climb mountains in mm-hmm. the shape I'm in?" So yeah, um, but it's it's hard. And but uh, you know, I started you know just walking around the neighborhood just you know and uh, my goal was i'm going to go at least two miles every day and uh i still use that regimen today it's like mm-hmm. you know it's it's not hard cardio activity it's you know but it's getting out there and moving and uh, mm-hmm. you know with the help with uh technology like the apple watch and stuff you know it mm-hmm. you know it keeps us accountable it's really easy to say oh crap i haven't gone in my miles today i need to go do that right now so I grab the dog, grab the leash, and go out there mm-hmm. and, uh, and do it. So yeah, with with today's technology, you know, there's really no reason why people, uh, you know, besides health issues, you know, I, I don't like to judge and I don't like to say things, but you know, I think there is an issue in, especially in America, with uh, you know people being overweight, and you know, I don't say that to judge, but I it's a way to you know try to encourage people to to get healthy because you know not only is it better for your physical health but also your mental health and uh you know with today's technology there's no really no excuse for people to not you know at least try and uh you know back when the fitbit was all the craze uh you know i had i had the fitbit and me and uh, tim watson used to have competitions of who could who could get more steps i remember i'd be at like 120,000 steps for the week and he'd be at like 39,000. And I'm like, dude, come on, you got to step it up. So we'd have, we'd have competitions. It'd be like 11 o'clock at night. And I'd be like a hundred steps behind him. And I just go run like a mile. I'm like, I'm not going to lose the Tim. And so uh, I think it just takes, it takes almost like a um, defining moment in someone's life before they really commit to making a lifestyle change. It's not about, it's not about diets. It's not about, uh, you know, losing the weight. It's about making a lifestyle change because you could lose 50 pounds but if you go back to the life you were living before, you're just going to gain it all back. And that's why I tell people, I tell people the, the first thing you need to do is understand that it's going to be a lifestyle change. You got to change your life from here on out. And the, the thing I tell people to stop doing is drinking their calories. Stop drinking pop, stop drinking sugary drinks, like energy drinks and, and fruit, fruit, coffee drinks, like frappes, which I do admit everyone, <laughs> right. Every once in a while, I will indulge in a, in a frappe from McDonald's. That's like my guilty pleasure drink is a frappe from McDonald's. And, um, but but yeah, I mean, me and Jordan, we we don't buy junk food, we don't buy snacks, I don't drink pop, and so it takes it takes dedication and uh, it takes kind of like looking in the mirror and being like, wow, I look terrible, you know, and I want to make these goals. Like, I want to I want to go climb Mount Everest or I want to go climb Mount Whitney, but I'm never going to do it, uh, you know, in the shape I'm in now. And so uh, 
it takes dedication and but anybody can do it really. I mean, it, once you get a groove, it's not hard. And, uh, you know, there's tons of people that, that will be, would be willing to help. You know, you can go to a gym and find people that are willing to help you. And I, I hate gyms. I hate going to work out. And so my, my working out is hiking and biking. And I do like home workouts when I'm not feeling lazy. Um, but, uh, it, you know, they, you know, they say, you know, uh, abs are made in the kitchen. And, uh, so you, number one is, is changing your, your diet and, uh, and not going on a fad diet, like the keto or Atkin diet or whatever. It's, it's just cutting out unnecessary stuff, like eating out at McDonald's every day for lunch and drinking, drinking pop. That'll, that'll yeah. help a ton. I know, I know people that will cut out pop and they'll lose 20 pounds in a month. Yeah. Yeah. Cutting, cutting out pop is like the, one of the biggest things you can do. Like, and I, mm-hmm. I realized that like, cause I used to drink two or three a day and I cut, you know, I cut down to one a week or something like that, mm-hmm. man. It's just, you know, you know, like my biggest vice probably is, is this, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I like craft. I still like craft beer. I, I, I enjoy mm-hmm. it. Um, you know, just one or two. But, you know, these things are just, it's like drinking a loaf of bread. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's bad. So um, if I could just kick, the, if I could kick that, you know, mm-hmm. but I try to offset it with uh, being active enough to right. you know, offset a little bit. And, uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, try to set those goals to be able to do things that, that I really want to do. I really want to go, I want to go backpack 40 miles this weekend or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I got to be in the right shape to do that. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's a great story, yeah. man. That's really, that's, that's inspirational. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I like telling it. I don't, I don't tell it to brag and I don't, I don't, you know, post about it on social media to brag. I, I post about it and talk about it to inspire people and be like, look, you can, if I can do it, because I used to eat like just stupid food, you know, lazy. And I used to be that way. I mean, I still am sometimes. Um, and I've let myself go since I got married, but, but it, really anybody can do it. And, and, uh, I, I'd love to help anybody who has questions. Like if you watch, watch this video and uh, you have any questions, seriously, like I would love to help you reach your goals. And uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I just love, I, I, it's one of my favorite things to talk about because it is a huge accomplishment in my life. And, and anybody who has lost weight and transformed uh, in themselves, they should brag about it because it is a huge thing it's, it's almost like getting like a doctorate or something like that in college maybe maybe not to that, that extent but it's like it's like a life achievement it is absolutely completely agree mm-hmm. well thanks so much man that's 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 all the questions i got today so i really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me you know this has been awesome Great yeah man this is this is cool how long we've been going for a little over an hour uh, an hour an hour and six minutes i mean it's crazy i was thinking like Oh, we'll probably go for like a half an hour, but then you get to talking about stuff you're passionate about and it could go on forever. And, you know, I remember like my, my, my mom at the grocery store or whatever, talking on the phone with her friends, like she'd be talking for hours. I'm like, how are you still talking? You have, how do you have not run out of stuff to talk about? And here I am as an adult. I mean, I could talk, I mean, I could talk to you for hours. Any of my backpacking friends. I mean, we've, we spent a lot of time in the back country having some cool conversations and it's no different here on the, video chat we can just do it from a uh, hundred you know hundred miles away from each other exactly that's awesome and, and we won't give each other the coronavirus i hope i hope not i don't think you can get it through uh social media so <laughs> at least not yet all right man well thanks so much for coming on i appreciate it dude and uh it's been great talking to you yeah you too man we'll have to do this uh again in the future maybe maybe with jordan next time absolutely yeah all right well take care man I'll talk to you soon. All right. See you later.